Monday. Half a day. Half a day. Okay, now we're all together. Are we all in the same room? Yeah. We're all here for the same purpose? Okay, yes, we're here for to make it through the day. That's our main purpose. That's how you look at it if you're an organizer like Austin and Elsa. But uh, we want to welcome you to the um, eighth conference for the Center for Island Sustainability. And uh, it's been eight years, uh, and it's been a while. Uh, since we first explored the whole concept of uh, nissology. And nissology was a, a conceptualization uh, given to me by a, an economist from Okinawa named Dr. Kakazu, who said that, uh, you know, islands have their own rhythm, that it is uh, pointless to try to copy what's going on in the U.S. or uh, mainland Japan or mainland China in terms of the economy and the society and cultural preservation and anything else. That, uh, that islands have their own economies of scale. Stop trying to make these kind of phony comparisons because you're always going to come up short. So when it came time to kind of implement a green strategy at the University of Guam, which I was very interested in about becoming president, uh, uh, you know, there were many universities who were also going in a similar direction and they started these things like global sustainability, you know. Every university had a thing on global sustainability, and I thought, wow, we can't do global sustainability. Why don't we just try island sustainability? Why don't we just start here at home and try to work our way through uh, the issues that we have as island societies? So we started the Center for Island Soci uh, Sustainability, and since that time we've moved on and we've had lots of conferences, we've had lots of keynote speakers, and Sometimes people say, well, what has it resulted of in all this? What has been the consequence of all this activity? Well, there's a lot of, uh, there. all right, wow. Let me start over. Okay, what is the consequence of all these eight years of conferences? Well, I think that, uh, you know, for those of us, I always tell people that I'm just a, a 20th century person, you know. I was born in the 20th century, I came to maturation in the 20th century, and now I'm living in the 21st century, and I'm not really sure what to do, you know, because everything seems to change. And so the challenges are different. But there is a generational shift occurring right under the noses of 20th century people, and that shift, uh, amongst young people is that they just simply view the world differently. And they view the world differently and when you ask them what are the pressing problems of the day, they talk about the natural environment, they talk about air, they talk about water, they talk about food security. These are the basics that they think of. These are the pressing issues of the day. Energy, where are we going to get our energy? How are we going to sustain our way of life? This is such a a uh, refreshing uh, point of view for, for those of us who uh, kind of came to maturity in the uh, 20th century. But we are here today and beginning this conference with the theme Cultivating Communities uh, for Sustainable Action. So it really implies that, um, that we have to do more than just take up space in somebody's consciousness, which is really what we're, what normally we do, you know. We just create a little consciousness shift, consciousness shift, consciousness uh, uh, awareness, uh, awakening, and then we go out and we just do what we normally do every day. And so we have to make that shift. So the next part is moving from the consciousness uh, to other parts of the body, like your arms and fingers that need to write legislation. And I think one of the senators here is going to put, put that to uh, use today or shortly. Uh, the legs uh, and feet to use in a different kind of transportation system. The changes in our daily lives. So as we look at this time, and as we look at this uh, uh, moment in our history, uh, there is always a time for analysis, but then there comes a time for action. Uh, there's always a time for study, and then there's a time for implementation. And there's always a time for blaming. And then there's a time for collaboration. And there's a time to crawl and take baby steps, and a time to step forward and run with it. 
Uh, now is that time. You know, one of my great friends here, David Howard, said that I asked him, how, how is it in the new environment with uh, the new administration? And he says, we're trying to teach some of the new people that I'm working with now that science is not a four-letter word. I said, well, that's an interesting concept because, you know, sometimes some people think that, you know, when you do too much study, it's dangerous because you're going to find out things that you don't want to know. So in the meantime, the University of Guam, through the efforts of Austin and Elsa, are, are doing great things. One of the great things of this conference is that uh, there's no me in the conference. That's a step for uh, uh, sustainability right there, you know. So people will say, well, where's the beef? I said, the beef is in the program. You got 70 uh, uh, presentations, you got a lot of ideas, and you got a lot of circulation. Now, the, the irony here, and this always, and I look back at every conference of the past five conferences, and you know, this is supposed to be kind of timed with Earth Day. You know, Earth Day is on the 22nd. So, you know, when we were trying to figure out the original calendar, when would be a good time to have the Center for Island Sustainability Conference? We tried to time it with Earth Day, so, you know, it's all going to end up in a big bang at the end of the week, and we're all going to march for climate change or something like that. I think uh, Lori Ramundo's in charge of that and a few other university people, so that's a great uh, end to it. But there's also another day. Um, that kind of coincides with this, and that's April 15. So now April 15, you say, well, that's tax day. You know, most people think it's tax day. But here in this part of the Pacific, we're reminded every year that April 15th is the birthday of Kim Il-sung, the first leader of North Korea. So every time his birthday comes around, we have to see this enormous display of military hardware, and then everybody goes into like, are we going to get attacked? Are they going to throw a missile our way? What is the concern about it? So every year that I've noticed that I went back through the proceedings, there was always some conversation about the North Korean crisis. Some of it, of course, is manufactured. Some of it is hyped up. Some of it is uh, very real. We should be concerned. But living between April 15th, the birthday of Kim Il-sung, and Earth Day, lies the Center for Island Sustainability. <laughs> so welcome to our conference. Thank you very much.